Hello YouTube. Let me tell you about a very interesting place and uh, a very fascinating legend. And that's in Russia. And we're speaking about the Republic of Bashkortostan, also called Bashkiria. It's a republic in Russia, located between the Volga and the Ural Mountains. It covers about 144,000 square kilometers. It's like 56,000 square miles. And it's not, you know, not small. It has a population of 4 million people, more than some countries. It's Russia's most populous republic. And uh, if you ever go there, which I think you will find very interesting, the capital city, uh, the, and the largest city is Ufa. I mentioned UFO sightings there in my videos and books. But now I want to talk about a very interesting supposedly ancient legend from Bashkiria. And, uh, but let me tell you a few words about the people of that land. It is known that in the recent past each Bashkir clan had its own tree, battle cry, bird and tamga. Tamga is an abstract seal or stamp used by Eurasian nomads and by cultures influenced by them. The Tamga was normally the emblem of a particular tribe, clan or family. They were common among the Eurasian nomads throughout the classical antiquity and the Middle Ages. This was associated with a widespread of legends about the relationship of men with the animal and plant world. They especially often depict images of a wolf, a crane, a crow and an eagle which have survived to this day as ethnonyms of genetic units. Uh, you know, compare it to Native uh, <clears throat> Americans in the uh, New World. I think you'll find some similarities between the cultures. Anyway, in the scientific research literature, the legend about the origin of the Bashkirs um, from the wolf, which allegedly showed them the way to the Urals, has been repeatedly cited. The legend of this type is connected with the plot of the ancient Bashkir banner with the image of a wolf's head. The plot refers to the events of the 5th century AD. Since then, their ancestors began to be called Bashkortar, that is, people who came from the wolf, from the chief wolf. Previously, the wolf was called Kort. Um, Bashkort means head wolf, or chief wolf. And this is where the word Bashkort, um, we also refer to Bashkir, came from. Now, let's get to the legend. The Cascade Waterfall of Cook. Karauk is one of the most popular natural attractions of Bashkortostan. However, few people know that in the addition to the picturesque surrounding, the waterfall is interesting with a very unusual legend. According to the modern interpretation of the popular belief in ancient times, located here was what you and I would describe in the 21st century as an alien base. In confirmation of this, the literal source refers to some distinctive features of this area. A rock similar in structure to concrete, the presence on one of the rocks of a stone in the form of a humanoid creature, and the origin of the name itself, Karauk, translated from Bashkir means black arrow. So the locals called an unknown aircraft of black color that had the shape of an arrow. The story, of course, is more than strange and more like the plot of a science fiction film. So initially there was no interest in this topic. Professor of geology Anatoly Malahov wrote about the cosmic legend of the origin of Cook Karauk waterfall in his book The Future is Not in the Past. On the pages of his publication, he cited a local resident's story recorded during a casual conversation in which a certain black arrow appeared and people in unusual clothes and a concrete platform from where this very black arrow took off and a stone or rocky figure of a man on one of the to tops of one of the surrounding rocks. The fantastic events described in the book took place a very long time ago but when exactly is not specified. 
the ship in the form of a black arrow or rather its tip has been standing here for more than one year <clears throat> the locals were interested in unusual guests but the people who arrived or whom we can, can describe as people on this strange device did not look for contact with the residents of the surrounding villages surreptitiously the Bashkirs managed to spy that the crew of the arrow was busy building a certain site they brought small stones and poured them with a fixing solution and when the site was completed the black arrow soared into the sky and never appeared here again over the years the slab built by the strange people gradually collapsed and eventually cracked under the force of the water flow collapsing with the <clears throat> Uh, with the stone blocks basically it is worth paying attention to a very peculiar interpretation of the name of the waterfall and as a result the you know the ties were formed to a certain legend about aliens and by the way according to some uh, researchers it stands out from the general series of Bashkir mythologies including those with a cosmological plot but I'll give you later examples of the Bashkir beliefs uh, before uh, the Bashkirs converted to Islam and references to the heavenly residence. To the skeptics, the question of the origin of this amazing story and moreover the antiquity of the example given by the author as an alleged folk myth making just came up by itself. After all, you can easily see the obvious similarity of the plot with the modern fantasy sagas about the arrival of space aliens on Earth according to those uh, deniers so to say an obligatory element of which is the strange clothing of the crew and the unusual shape of the aircraft look there are those who look for conventional explanation of the legend and that's quite understandable when i read uh, serious proof that the legend is not true i will report it and i'd like to get more information about this legend if possible so far i have not but i think it all depends on what the geologist knew well he was no ordin ordinary geologist anatoly alexeyevich malahov who passed away in 1983 was an expert on the topics of geology paleontology and mineralogy geologist professor doctor of geological and mineralogical sciences well, Malahov participated in many expeditions and also he attended World Congresses. So maybe some of you or your parents heard his name. He had lectured not only in the USSR, but also in Albania, Algeria, Bulgaria, Belgium, Cuba, Mexico, and Italy. But he also wrote many popular scientific works on approximately the same subjects. And they were included in the very popular Eureka series. His books were published in Moscow, um, in the Urals, in the Baltics, um, and they were translated in, I think, Arabic, Bulgarian, German, English, Spanish, French, and Japanese. So you, you might find it. And he was uh, awarded prizes of all union competitions. Malakov, this is how we pronounce his name. But you see, he also wrote science fiction novels. Although no one I know accused him of inventing the Black Arrow legend, because he specifically mentioned that he heard it uh, from the local uh, person there. But let's look at some interesting materials from the ancient times in the land of uh, Bashkortostan. Let's see if there is any hint of alien contacts or encounters with the celestial beings. I, I did my research and I want to present it here to the extent possible in the video. Let me start with my favorite diligent observer of the ancient Russian lands, the Arab traveler and diplomat of the 10th century, Ibn Fadlan, writes that in his time the Bashkirs were idol worshippers. Some of them supposedly worshipped snakes, fish, cranes, and various animals. Others recognized the twelve deities or gods who ruled winter, summer, rain, wind, trees, water, night, day, death, and life. Others believed in higher deities who dwelt in the heavens. In anthropomorphic representation of 
natural phenomena and they are called in anim animistic representations in magic and witchcraft we have fragments of those religious ideas with which the Bashkirs lived before the spread of Muslim teachings among them. Up to that time, or perhaps together with the Arabic script, the ideas of Peri and Al-Bast and about black magic practitioners, the ideas widely spread in the Iranian cultural world penetrated into the Bashkir worldview. In the extensive literature devoted to Bashkirs, we find only greens, poetic fragments of their former world view. In the early 20th century, excavations of ancient monuments were carried out mainly in search of rare antiquities and not to solve ethnological problems. Therefore, at that time, Russian scientists had a very vague idea about the genesis of tribes on the Bashkir territory and the successive change of cultures, their origin and relationships, especially at the time when cultural groupings were formed, which are now being studied by ethnographers engaged in modern life. If we still know something about the ancient cultures of southern and central Russia, then according to the paleoethnology of the Urals, now inhabited by the Bashkirs, we know almost nothing about them, and that's according to the early Russian researchers. But there are some very interesting beliefs about serpents that reminded me of other cultures. I already mentioned the uh, American Indians, and um, Latin American and Central American. Look, locations very far removed from the Bashkiria lands, from the Urals. The Bashkir's idea of tornadoes and other aerial phenomena as terrible monsters like snakes is tremendously interesting and original. The snake, Yalan, is generally considered by Bashkirs to be a malicious, dangerous and at the same time unusual creature. A Russian researcher Lepechin wrote that Bashkir, wherever and how soon he goes, when he sees a snake, he will stop and kill it and stick the snake's head into the ground. And they do the latter in order that it does not come to life because according to their conviction its or her comrades come to the killed snake and bring a root of an unknown herb which is applied to the wounds so that she comes back to life. Somebody had to observe it. An ordinary snake having lived up to a hundred years turns into Ajda'a. The Ajda'a is a huge snake or dragon, several dozen fathoms long. It lives in lakes and sometimes in wells. Ajda'a devours small cattle suitable to the lake for, for watering, especially lambs. Having lived um, to 500 or 1000 years, Ajda'a turns into Yuha. Yuha devours people, especially girls, can take the image of a person, an animal, and so on. The Ashda usually does not live up to the age of Yuha, as the clouds carry her to Mount Kaf, which lies beyond the Arctic Ocean and is filled with all kinds of reptiles and dragons. How Ashda'a is carried away, there are not just a few eyewitnesses among Bashkirs who saw it. You can hear a lot of stories about it, so somebody again had to observe it. Some of the stories are reported by the researcher Yuliev in one of his reports. When the weather is completely clear, a small cloud with thunder and lightning appears approaching the lake. As soon as the cloud touches the water, the latter begins to rage, spin and beat like a fountain, and the head of the most terrible monster with huge eyes rolling out of their sockets like wooden cups for kumis appears from it. The cloud which has seized the head of the monster in its arms begins to rise up, dragging the trunk with it. It looks uh, mottled with a glossy hue. Finally the tail appears, made into the likeness of a fork. The monster, raised to a considerable distance from the water, begins to stretch and bend. 
wagging its tail in all directions, which drags along the ground and leaves a trace in the form of a furrow. The monster carried by the cloud now makes a moan, then whistles or hisses, then bends its tail in a ring, then angrily strikes its mighty sides, not sparing itself and wanting to free itself. But some supernatural force holds the monster's head tighter than any vice, not giving it the opportunity to even move it. Unable to escape, the monster gradually moves away, and its body under the sun's rays takes on an increasingly reddish, bright golden color. It's a very interesting description of a celestial craft, I think. According to some stories from the northeastern Trans-Ural Bashkiria, the Ashda sometimes take on a human form. And now this. Among other supernatural beings, the Bashkirs also have stories about the imps, Bisura or Bichura. These are little yellow men in red shirts who live in clearings in deep forests. The male Bisura attracts women um, human females in the forest and enters into cohabitation with them and the female Abisura does the same with men human men to those persons with whom the Abisura enter relationship they come into money and uh, the latter are always very rich all this reminds me of our modern reports about aliens extraterrestrial sentient beings operating on our planet and um, and sometimes the relationship they they establish with human beings. Now, to the mythical legends about the origin of the Bashkir Kubelak family and the Kumrik tribe, in which it is easy to catch echoes of ancient totemic views. The ethnonyms themselves indicate their connection with the pre-Islamic ancestral mythology. Kubalak was butterfly, Kumbrik was snag, and so forth. The comparison of different uh, accounts of the plot about the appearance of the Kubalak genius leads us to the assumption that these legends re refract the process of development of mythologi mythological representation in a very peculiar way. In one of them, a flying monster acts as the ancestor. In another, a hairy humanoid creature. And in the third, an ordinary old man who accidentally wandered into the wilderness of the forest. Another reminder of ancient aliens, at least when it comes to flying monster. As we already know, an Ashda A could appear as a human being. I'm not even going to comment on the, uh, uh, the hairy humanoid creature. <laughs> That's outside the... Uh, scope of this video but i have some about such creatures that have been cited in the urals and other parts of russia let's look now at some interesting sites in bashkiria not all of course because otherwise the video could be very long let's look at mountain eremel one of the main attractions of bashkiria is the mountain eremel it impresses with its grandeur beauty extent and mysticism the mountain range has several peaks, Balshoi Iremel, or the Big Iremel, and Mali Iremel, or Small Iremel, as well as the Kabanchik and the Zerebchik. But the highest and main peak is Balshoi Iremel. The ascent and descent is 14 kilometers to go up and 14 kilometers to go down. It is noteworthy that Iremel is the center of the sources of almost all the rivers of Eurasia. You can swim along the rivers from the Iremil to the Arctic Ocean, the Caspian Sea, and through the Volga Don Canal to the Azov, uh, Be uh, Black and the Mediterranean Seas. At least you could do it. But if we take into account that the Volga Don Canal, which is now dry, once united the Volga and the Don rivers, then it was possible to swim from Iremil straight to Greece. People still believe that the water in the rivers originating in the mountain range has miraculous properties. It gives strength, heals from diseases, and glows at night. Nowadays, experts 
experts, experts on anomalous phenomena have reports that Iremel is a place where you can observe UFOs, see a snowman or yeti or other monsters, according to them. You remember the hairy creature I mentioned before as a possible ancestor of the Kubalak genus? By the way, there is also a legend that a long time ago Iremel was inhabited by the Chuj people who hid their huge wealth in the mountains. Well, you can see my videos about the Chuj uh, people and the, and the small size of tiny humanoids of the Urals. But now I want to talk about the Yamantau mountain. This place has the title of the highest point in the southern Urals. Its height is 1640 meters. But this is not its main attraction. They say that the highest mountain, the Urals, is also a favorite UFO spot. This is claimed by local residents and, of course, Russian ufologists. On the top of the mountain, locals often see various flashes, glow discharges like electric ones. That's just, uh, you know, to climb to the top very difficult and few have reached it. They say that when trying to do it, there is an unreasonable feeling of fear. The weather suddenly becomes bad and windy. The mountain does not seem to let uninvited guests up there. What's the matter? No one can say for sure. Only it was not for nothing that it was called the Yamantau, which means bad mountain in Bashkir. It is shrouded in many mysteries and legends. And of course, the Western media and I don't put too much value in the reports um, of New York Times, for example. They, they say that it's a top secret Russian military facility located in the depths of the mountain. Power lines, railways and highways are connected to the top of the mountain. Look, I'll talk about this mountain in another video at a greater length, but I caution my audience about this sensationalist reporting from very unreliable media. There is definitely something strange that is going on in the bowels of the mountain. And of course, um, there have to be military units, but I think it has more to do with the storage of state secrets, artifacts and hardware. You know what? Remember the first Indiana Jones movie and the immense government storage? Well, time will tell. So this is what I wanted to tell you about Bashkiria and I will return more to this land in the future about reports of very interesting, uh, relatively recent uh, UFO sightings and encounters. So if uh, you like my research and if you can support my work, uh, please uh, see the links in the description to this video. Please subscribe and tell others. Thank you.